So here we've got a broken trace. Now, you can either just cut that trace off and leave it off for the rest of the day and do your maintenance at home, or you can be like us, we always have some spares on hand. We've got them pre-snelled, cut to the right length, and uh, you can actually cut these traces any length, so length isn't really that important. And we just do an improved clinch four times round, back through the hole, and then back through the back. Hold the tab in short, and that's it. The other thing that's worth remembering, oh, another broken trace. So obviously there's a few sharks out oh, here. Oh yeah, look at this shark damage. I'll show you in a minute. There's some quite major shark damage coming up here. So here's the whole reason for the shore thing. This is the shark damage. Oh, you've seen the last two traces were snipped off. The line here has been gnawed until it's almost right through. I'm going to cut this piece out and put a knot in it. Now, had that been a 100 kg line or 150 kg line, it still would have suffered the same damage. If that shark had just been a little bit uh, luckier, it would have actually severed the line. And if you don't have a sure thing, that would be your contiki's gone. Occasionally you get a trace and no matter how you try it, you cannot find an empty slot because the hooks may have clustered. Happens probably about once every six sets. What I do is just cut that particular trace off, shorten it a couple of inches, and try again. And there we are, perfect. It only takes a few seconds extra to do these little bits of maintenance as you're winding the uh, traces on, and then you've always got perfectly maintained gear, which will fish at its optimum the next time that you go and use it. Winding the traces back onto the sure thing reel spool doesn't actually take that much longer than unclipping your traces as you do conventionally and placing them on a trace rack. And the other thing that you need to think about, you never have to take them off because they're self-setting. So really what you're doing when you're storing them like this is you're actually loading the magazine um, ready for the next shot. And that's it, five minutes and we're all up. Last trace. We're sitting on the outgoing tide also, that could have an impact on why we've caught so few fish. Uh, the incoming tide on the west coast is a far better fishing proposition. I've unclipped the weight and I like to always keep the tension on the line so just tuck the clip in there because you don't want the line unraveling and, and traces loosening up so as long as you keep tension on this end of the line tension stays on everything there's no unraveling and we're just ready to bait it up for the next set now. We've tested the shore thing extensively on both the east and the west coast and here you see a 2,000 metre set being put out from Urititi Beach. We didn't set the timer on the Contiki and we had the timer on the Sure Thing set to half an hour. So basically we ran the batteries flat and uh, was able to check how far out we got. We got to 2,000 metres and the Contiki was still pulling for two minutes after we had run out of line. So really that just tensioned the line. But it shows that there's certainly no extra drag caused by the use of the sure thing. It's almost impossible to see a Contiki and sure thing with the naked eye at two kilometers. But luckily we've got a decent zoom on the camera and eventually we managed to capture it. You'll notice that the float on the sure thing shown in this video clip and the following ones is different than the bright orange polystyrene ones in the earlier video and we've changed to the bright polystyrene ones because they perform far better and the visibility is vastly superior at long distances. We've caught fish every time that we've set the sure thing. Our best catches have been up to 16 snapper on a single set and on some hauls 
the snapper have averaged over five pounds each. This gear really does fish well and I put these great catch rates down to all the weight we have on the hook section. We've also been seriously hammered by sharks at times, especially on the west coast, but obviously it doesn't cause us any concerns because we cannot lose the contiki as a result of sharks biting through the hook section as we are so well protected by the shore thing. Here we're fishing with Brian Runstrom and his partner Liz and we're entered in a contiki fishing contest run by the Walsford Fire Department and they have a hook limit of 12 hooks per set. So we're up to the hook section and we can feel the weight, we know we've got a few fish, in fact we're hoping it's just one big one but that wasn't to be. Yet we all thought it was a snapper on every hook because even though we'd put 12 hooks out we did get quite ravaged by sharks. I think we actually got 7 or 8 hooks back so there was a couple of hooks that didn't have fish on. But despite that it's a fantastic catch for setting only 12 hooks. I was even more surprised when Brian rang me that evening and said that we had the two biggest fish of the contest so we won. We also met Barry Southgate on the beach, he's second in from the left and he told us he has lost Contiki's twice to sharks off this section of coast so he's pretty keen to get his hands on a shore thing as well. Here we see some earlier trials, uh, we've got no float on the shore thing, you may be able to make it out right over the horizon there somewhere. We'd run this trial without a float just to see what would happen if it rolls and rolls in the surf on the way out and uh, it had no effect, the gear still deployed perfectly and we still caught a few fish on it. The surf on this day is 2.5 metres and it's breaking out to 500 or 600 metres offshore so these are pretty challenging conditions but they haven't presented any problems to the shore thing. It, we set it three times on this particular day and had no issues on any of the sets. One of the best things about using a shore thing is after the gear's set and it's out there fishing, you're not tearing your hair out worrying, am I going to get my contiki back? Are the sharks going to bite me off? You just know you're safe. You know that your hooks are miles away from your main line and you know that it's almost impossible for the sharks to be attracted to your main line. You'll also be far less affected by longshore currents because you've got so much weight on, your gear is much more securely anchored. And the other thing, if there's been any weed or banks or anything on the way out, you know you haven't got your hooks all tangled in it. You know that you've set your hooks clean on the other side of it because you've carried them over the top of everything. And last, but certainly not least, if you snag your hook section, you're just going to lose the hook section. You'll recover the sure thing and your contiki unharmed. That's because the dropper line is only 65 kg between the sure thing and the hook section. The rest of your gear should be at least 100 up to 150 kg breaking strain. Yeah, well, you know, first day out in the water uh, on my own, uh, tremendous uh, downshore winds, currents, sent the shore thing mobile dropper rig out, went out over a kilometre out, brought it, brought it back in down shore a bit, didn't think we'd have anything on and we had all these snapper on. Wow. We had 13 snapper, 3 kawai, and we gave away 4, four snapper and, two, and 1 kawai, and what a tremendous day. Dennis Bradley, who fishes his shore thing weekly, 
send in these great picks of catches from both the east and west coasts. He certainly gets some good fish. So if you need any more info and you're in New Zealand, just ring 09-634-5005 or drop in at 39A Nelson Street, Onihunga, Auckland.